Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. We're here at the Geneva Concours in Geneva, Illinois, and I'm here with Dave. Dave, what's your last name? Dave, I'm Shattuck, Dave Shattuck. Dave Shattuck, and Dave's got a great car here. Uh, it's early in the show, and Dave, what'd you bring today? Uh, I brought a uh, the first generation V12 Packard. Uh, it's a model 1916, but this car was produced in 1915. It's an unbelievable vehicle. Let's take a look now. Dave, stay with me for just a moment. Stand in front of your car for a moment. Come on with me. When did you, uh, when did you, what made you get this car out of all the cars in the world? Well, my wife and I were looking to add to the collection. We were looking for a large brass era touring car. And for most of the brass era tours, that means the car has to be produced before January 1 of 1916. So we found this car up for sale at the Hershey auction uh, last fall, and I happened to know the owner of the car, yeah. and we decided this would be a great addition to the collection. This looks like a great car. So first of all, I wanna just come over here because there's some details, and I just want people to kind of pick up on this so they can read that and learn more about the car that they may wanna know, as well as this neat engine configuration of the car. So with that being said, let's go right to our featured attraction. Come on back with me. And here is the 1915 Packard. And it just looks fantastic. Take a look at these headlights. I mean, how can you not love those? Look at the, now tell me about these headlights because you were saying these are not gas. They're not. This is the uh, 15 Packard or this model called the 125 was produced with all electric lighting. I was one of the first cars out to have all electric lights around. Uh, it has, uh, in addition, you can see the hand crank down there uh, in the uh, leather holder, but the car does have an electric start. That's the temperature gauge, and it's interesting because that needle that you can see through there moves from one side to the other as the temperature of the coolant increases. That's amazing. So let's take a look at the side of the car and before they put all the stanchions around it and the sun's coming out. Tell me about the wheelbase now. Uh, this is a 125 inch wheelbase. They produced in this model two wheelbases. They also produced a 135 inch wheelbase car. So this is the baby of the two models that they produced. <laughs> you know, Dave, you're about what, six foot one, something like that? Stand next to the baby. I just want to show people a perspective of the small one. So, yeah, this is the compact car. Right. Well, with the top up, the top stands over seven and a half feet high. Oh my gosh, it's, it's like a small, uh, a small uh, tractor trailer. So, and look at the uh, leather wrapped around. The leather spring gaiters, yep. Spring gaiters. And we've got the uh, the compartment here, and this is for a grease fitting. There's grease fittings back there. Let's take a look at the back of the car. Dave, just for perspective, stand next to the back again, please. I mean, this is just a tall vehicle. <laughs> That's as tall as you are. Wow. All right, and let's uh, feature some of the uh, pieces here. We've got the now the spring here. How does that connect? That's okay, a tra let's... that's a transverse leaf spring. Look at that. It's additional spring for the weight of the car. And this is gas. That's the uh, gas cap. And tell me about this. That's a uh, valve handle that you're looking at there. The car has a small baffle in the gas tank, so that there's a reserve. As the tank drains out, you turn that lever to the other side and it will pick up um, a couple more gallons of gas out of the tank. That's amazing. I want to give people just one more look at the side. I don't want to go too fast on this car because it is just amazing. The beautiful striping. All right, let's, uh, before we take a look at the interior, there's your tail light. Is there also a light that comes down on the plate? Uh, yes. Look at that. That's pretty neat. Lit the plate back in that time frame. The first physical plate was 1911. So this wasn't too far. Take a look at Dave, one of the nice things about this is you'll see some of these 
science for the first time this full screen of your computer let's uh let's hear this great horn that it has <laughs> that is awesome so these are the what they call these marker lights and that is correct with the, the bulb lights. in there cow lights with the bulb and the mirrors and this wonderful now this folds down it folds several different ways. Okay. It will tip back, it will V out. There's a whole, it's a very complicated mechanism yeah. uh, on that windshield. So we're just gonna keep that there. Let's um, should, let's open the other side. First of all, here's the interior. This is why they call it the seven passenger. You can see the jump seats and the seats here. I wanna hop along with you on the other side if we can. So let's open this door, please. Front door? Yeah. And by the way, before I do that, look at there's a light for the passengers in the back. Like so, when they're getting in at night. Amazing. And an interesting feature yeah. here is how the jump seats fold up to clear out of the way if you don't use them. Oh, that That's is. where the seat sits if, in fact, you don't have enough passengers in the back seat. So it folds that way. Yes. Let's do that. Give me one more second. I want to get on the other side. Show me how that does that one more time. Go ahead. So here is one of the jump seats in the back to open it for use you tip it one way fold it over and flip the seat back up that's crazy all right early automotive all right let's uh so here we've got the miles let's feature this This plaque here. And then the gasoline, this is not the gasoline gauged Dave was sharing, this is actually the pressure. Tell me, what, what is that right there? That's just a footrest. Footrest. For using the accelerator. And this is the start button, that big button yeah, there. Yeah, the starter button. You've got a brake as well as a... And you the gear shift lever is over on the left side. Okay, and you were sharing that the, uh, that the brake is, uh, let me go around this way. The brake is uh, only on the back brakes. So we only have back drums, you can see here, that squeeze. And, and share with me what's happening here in the, okay. the steering column. Uh, all of the controls, one interesting feature of this design, and it was a carryover from the prior model on a Packard. Uh, this is the spark timing, though the distributor has automatic advance. Okay. This is the hand throttle. Uh, this grouping here, this is the ignition, turning it down is regular ignition, but there's an auxiliary set of uh, batteries that also will start the car separately if okay. needed. This is the light switch, and maybe you can see the different groupings of what the different light components between the headlights, the cowl lights, the parking lights, side marker lights, all come through that. This knob here is the carburetor and choke adjustment. Go ahead. This is the carb and choke adjustment. Uh, that's a, kind of a neutral position on the air to fuel mixture. If you go all the way up like that, that's the choke. Uh, when driving the car, this one seems to perform best at a position about there. It also, as you mentioned, it's, it has air pressure to uh, move the fuel from the tank in the back of the car up to the carburetor and there is a compressor on the car to do that okay but if if in fact the pressure is low after the car has been sitting there is this hand pump here that you have to manually uh, put pressure into the top of the tank to push the fuel up to the uh, carburetor got it and the pedals here we've got we've got accelerator accelerator brake which is an external contracting uh, band on the rear brakes. So it squeezes the outside of the squeezes band. Squeezes the outside. Okay. And this is the clutch. The handbrake is internal expanding shoes with inside the brake drum. Oh, okay. So this operates a separate set of shoes. And here's the gear shift lever, which if you can see the shift pattern is a little different. First is here, second is up and over to the left, third straight back, reverse is on the right and forward. So that pattern's a little different than uh, a modern car. It's reversed, if you will. So I really have to pay attention when I'm driving. So let me ask you a question. Is it possible, and I don't know this, to throw it from first to reverse? 
or well, no? Well, that would grind the gears. I understand yeah, yeah. that. No, there's but nothing to prevent okay. it. Okay, all right. There's Other nothing than to the, prevent the gears it. That's, itself, yes. <laughs> that's my question. All right, let's take a look under the hood. We'll shut the lights off, by the way. Oh. I see we've got those yeah. on. Thanks. Why don't we come over here? For yeah. Because there's more components over here. Well, we'll, we'll want to see both sides. Okay. Because uh, we want to give myself, if nobody else, more. <laughs> and I'm sure it'll be more people. But take a look. Tell me about this engine, because this engine's unique as well. Well, this is the first generation of V12 produced by Packard, and they were the first car company in the world to go into production with a V12 motor. Other companies around the world had prototyped some V12s, but Packard was the first to come out with it. Um, so it has a couple of unique features. It has, uh, as you're showing there, the distributor, which has two uh, caps. One cap powers one bank, and a cap on the other side powers the other bank of cylinders, all being driven off of the same drive assembly. Uh, in the center here is the carburetor. It is somewhat hidden right now by some heat shield material. Uh, the bottom of that carburetor bowl is within a quarter inch of the exhaust manifolds, and so it does have a tendency on warm days to want to boil the gas. So usually we'd have the exhaust manifolds here. Here they've got them on the inside coming and going out the back. Yes. Yes. They're inside the V. That's amazing. Similar to how the early Lincolns were. Thus the piece here that's put it on there for heat shield right so it doesn't bowl, yeah. boil over here's the starter I love how they put little plaques on everything at right. that time too to, this will be the first time we might be able to read some of those okay the water pump show me that again please this is the water pump Got here it. and the generator with a voltage regulator is a model casting number on the engine? That's the that's the car number. Car number. 80709. Uh, on each side is a coil. This is the style of a coil. Not yeah. so, not not uh, doesn't appear like what we're used to in a uh, later model car with the condensers. An interesting thing about this engine. Um, it is. These it, are gas filler. Th those cups. are the primer cups. It's yep. a 12 cylinder. Go ahead. Um, they made uh, this style of V12 for only one year. It is older technology in that it does not have a removable head. It's what I call a jug and plug motor. The cylinder bank, the block, is just a big jug. And you have these plugs that the primer cups and the spark plugs go into, but you have to take those out so this, to get this to the right valves. Here. The valves are come right up through those holes when you remove those plugs. Got it. All right, let's take, we're going to take a look at the other side of the engine for just a moment, and then we'll actually uh, come back to this side and start it. So here's the other side as well. There's the other distributor, the opposite side of the carburation, but all of the electrical work on that side. Look at how simplistic and yet wonderful, right? Right. Our steering column. Is that a grease fitting? Yes. Okay. Now, one thing um, about this uh, engine structure, well, first of all, about the car, uh, it has been cosmetically restored decades ago. Uh, it was repainted and reupholstered back in, I think, the late 60s or early 70s. But mechanically, the car is phenomenally original. I've talked to the gentleman that owned the car for the last 50 years, and uh, he stated very clearly that it still has the original pistons and rings in it. He said that they opened the access panel on the transmission and looked in everything seemed to be fine same with the rear end so mechanically it's an extremely original car I do have pictures of the car when it was literally pulled from the barn and the body was straight as an arrow though it had essentially no paint on it the paint had worn off over the years so this is basically a cosmetic only restoration unbelievable let's uh, shut this side of the engine compartment and lock that down
and we'll open up this side and then we'll have you sh show me how you start it too if you would please okay because uh, it's a little bit different than starting a regular car so we'll keep this side open and as Dave gets in all right well first and foremost we make sure we're in neutral okay parking neutral. brake is set um, I did drive it into the show so there is pressure in the fuel system okay so we're gonna turn the switch on I'm gonna give it a little gas and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the adjustment with the carburetor right here and I'm gonna put my left heel on the starter button That's great. And we can shut that down. Shut that off? Yeah. Dave, stay right there. You look great. The sun's hitting you right now. Dave, what a treat. This is an amazing uh, uh, smoothness for the V12, right? I mean... Uh... They're, they're very, very smooth. Um, you know, they're, because it's a V12, they're, a cylinder is firing every 60 degrees of the crankshaft rotation. So unlike a, uh, a lower cylinder car, this thing is firing all the time. Uh, it gets its power. Um, it's uh, 85 or 88 horsepower, which was over the top back in the day. It gets its power from that constant pulse of, of cylinders firing versus having big, large piston, uh, pistons. This is a very small piston-sized car, um, but it has phenomenal pull. Uh, it, the, I read the owner's manual. It says at three miles an hour in high gear, you should be able to step down on it, and it will just pull itself up without talking back to you, and it will. Uh, the cars uh, were tested. Ralph De Palma back in 15 had one on a racetrack and he averaged for 10 laps about 71 miles an hour in the car. I will tell you, uh, I ran out of courage at 60, so that's the <laughs> fastest I drove this car. Ran out of courage. Well, the car is obviously uh, absolutely amazing. It's right here in the center of the street at the Concours. Thanks for bringing it out and thanks for being on my car story. You bet. Thank you, Luke.